G'day, welcome to Lunch Money, uh, your online and social media home for special situations, workouts and capital raising professionals. Uh, just a very, very brief show today. We're just going to run for five or ten minutes. Uh, I'm going to tell you about some changes to the show. Uh, just uh, We're going to change the format slightly, but I don't want to miss the opportunity to uh, give you my thoughts on the Commissioner of Taxation's annual report. Uh, which was published this week, just uh, gives some insights into what's going on at the ATO, how they're going about collecting debt and what that means uh, for corporate restructuring. So firstly, uh, we're not going to do lunch money on Fridays anymore. We're going to uh, do it on Mondays. And instead of weekly, we're going to switch to fortnightly. With um, I've always said that we do the show because everything was locked down and we couldn't get out and about to see people. Uh, but now things are opening up and uh, people have got plenty of things to do live, uh, well, at 12 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. So uh, we're going to get out of your way and uh, switch to Mondays instead. And uh, we're going to switch to fortnightly instead of weekly. And that'll begin on Monday week. And we've already got a great show lined up for them. Um, I would like to also say, to remind you that um, because of the great content that we put on this show, I mean, we get great speakers from, from all walks of life. Um, don't forget that you can use uh, lunch money, as far as I know, uh, for commercial, uh, well, no, not commercial, what am I saying? Continual professional development points. So if you've got your uh, professional um, accreditation or membership, um, you know, this is, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can use uh, use lunch money for CBD points. I've been having lunches uh, all week this week. Um, I've been getting out there, making the most of our newfound freedoms and uh, been, been catching up with lots of uh, uh special situations and corporate restructuring people and everybody's uh, telling the same story uh, and that is that there's no activity in corporate restructuring because the ATOs aren't applying any pressure and the banks aren't doing anything any, either and we keep saying that um, for, for there's a lot of small businesses that uh, um, are holding back on uh, undertaking their restructuring that, that they're probably overdue to do. We, we know when we look at the insolvency statistics that um, insolvencies are, are less than half this year or corporate restructurings are less than half year on year. And uh, we ask ourselves, uh, why is that? And that's because there's no pressure coming from anywhere. So are we going to start seeing pressure from the ATO uh, and from the banks? Well, let's have a look. This week, the Com uh, Commissioner of Taxation uh, issued their annual uh, report I've been hanging out for this. It was about a week later than what I was anticipating. Uh, and let's just take a look at what it tells us. Firstly, the first interesting thing here um, is that we already know, obviously, there's been JobKeeper payments. Uh, there was the, um, the ATO announced that JobKeeper payments uh, were in the order of $88.8 .8 billion. Uh, they were made to one over a million uh, small businesses. Uh, receive JobKeeper payments. So if you're wondering uh, why aren't these small businesses under any pressure, well, there you go. There's the JobKeeper. Uh, what else is interesting here? $37.8 billion worth of superannuation uh, was released early under the um, under the scheme where you could access your superannuation. So in addition to the 90-odd billion in JobKeeper, we've got another nearly $40 billion there in, uh, in superannuation. And of course, that's not to uh, forget the cash flow boost uh, there was another $35.7 billion worth of cash flow boost credits um, that uh, that appeared in your uh, in your when you when you put in your BAS returns uh, in the earlier part of the financial year. So we, we kind of knew a lot of that. Um, what was interesting is that the ATO says that in in the last uh, 12 months, they've provided extensions in time to 1.4 million small businesses. So 1.4 million small businesses have uh, uh, got in touch with the ATO and the ATO said, sure, uh, we'll give you an extension in, in, uh, in your lodgements. Uh, in addition to that, now this next uh, little statistic here is, I guess it's staggering in one way, although I guess not surprising given what we're seeing in the marketplace. The ATO granted 400,000 small businesses payment plans. So these are small businesses that uh, haven't been able to, uh, to meet their ATO commitments. They've got in touch with the a uh, ATO and the ATO's uh, issued payment plans. I know that that process has been pretty much automated and streamlined. What's interesting is that uh, the ATO has also announced recently that they will be uh, they will start reporting um, 
small businesses who are, are not complying or are in arrears with their with with their tax debt. But I was on a webinar earlier this week with an insolvency firm and there were two uh, representatives from the ATO there and they made it pretty clear that whilst they are cognizant of the fact that by not reporting uh, companies that have got tax debt, uh, that does create a little bit of a moral hazard because you've got businesses supplying to businesses that if you've got a business that's that's got uh, a solvency issue because they're not making their ATO payments, uh, you've got other businesses supplying those businesses in good faith, uh, not aware of the fact that there are insolvency issues because they're not being reported by the ATO. So from the ATO's perspective, they're balancing what they see as a privacy issue uh, along with what they see as a, a public policy issue. And they're going to certainly come down on the side of, uh, of privacy. Um, so there you go, 400,000 payment plans. That's, you know, I don't know how many of those are businesses that would otherwise be looking to restructure to bite the bullet and, uh, and uh, change the way they do things. Um, the other interesting stat here out of the ATO is that they're in collectible debt that's outstanding. So overdue debt, now, the ATO calls this debt collectible, and it's collectible because it's not in dispute. So it's debt that's payable. Everybody admits it's payable. It's not in dispute. Uh, last year, it was $21.4 billion. This year, that figure's crept up to $24.3 billion. And the previous year, it was $16.6 billion. So you can see uh, from, from 18, 19, $16.5 billion. And in these last two uh, financial years where we've had uh, COVID impacting um, small businesses, you've seen uh, that, uh, that uh, amount of overdue tax that's not subject to dispute, that's owed by a small business, it's really leapt up. Uh, it's really leapt up you know, almost by by 50% from two years ago. Um, so then you go, well, you know, there's going to be no pressure from the ATO. Uh, perhaps the banks are going to do something. Well, we've got these two graphs that I've showed before on lunch money. Um, you can see that from the bank's point of view, their non-performing assets, there's not really any, any blip in non-performing assets from the banks. You can see that historically in the GFC, um, non-performing uh, business uh, debt uh, leapt up. Uh, but we're not seeing anything like that this time around. So uh, I don't think that um, we're not going to see any pressure from the banks and I don't really see anything uh, anytime soon uh, from the ATO. So um, join us Monday week. Uh, we'll be we'll be promoting the show uh, next week. So uh, um, you, you, your lunches, uh, your lunch times are now free from uh, from 12 o'clock on Fridays. Uh do remember to share, like, and subscribe to Lunch Money so that uh, you won't miss out on this change of uh, change of scheduling. And uh, I do look forward to uh, to seeing you uh, Monday week. Cheers.